Hello there, everybody. This is Mel Allen. It's showtime. With applause aplenty for first half fantastics. In all four races, that championship season is up for grabs. In baseball forums, funny things happened on the way, on the way to the all-star break. In Seattle, a midsummer night's dream under the kingdom. And on the field, the Nationals still like to showboat. In Pittsburgh, bucko defense ain't misbehaving. And in Anaheim, Ryan's Express knocks off the damn Yankees. Hit shows and highlights coming up center stage on This Week in Baseball. Brought to you by Gillette. Hear ye, hear ye, Major League Baseball. The people's choice for fantastic entertainment in 79. By the all-star break, attendance was up 900,000 over last year, when an all-time record 40 million fans came to catch the action. And this season, the action has defied all predictions. In New York, Billy Martin returned to the helm a season earlier than predicted to try to save the Yankees' sinking ship. But lackluster hitting and the continuing list of key injuries kept the world champs 11 games out, hobbling in fourth place. Meanwhile, the National League champion Dodgers staggered, dropping 31 out of 41. The result, a shocking plunge into the basement and the worst record in the National League. And talk about shocks, how about the fast start of the sparked up Houston Astros from fifth last season to first, a five and a half game lead. The major's best pitching staff has made the difference. Even a no hitter by Ken Forsh in the first week of the season. In California, an injury to Rod Carew figured to derail the Angels' pennant express but the Express only picked up steam. With seven players collecting 45 or more RBIs, the Angels easily led the majors in runs scored, 523, and led Texas in the American League West by two games. And where were Whitey Herzog's three-time division-winning Kansas City Royals? Well, by losing 14 of 15, they fell from first to 10 games out, almost out of the picture. In June, the Baltimore Orioles threatened to fly out of sight of the American League East. Late inning rallies gave the Birds a 23-6 record for the month, 11-0 in one-run games. And the Orioles' bullpen won 11, lost none, saved 10 over a six-week stretch. Yet, the Birds led Boston by just two games at the break. In the National League East, defending champ Philadelphia and rival Pittsburgh both had to fight to stay in the scramble. While in Montreal, the precocious Expos matured quickly with well-balanced, alert teamwork. A brief slide saw Montreal's lead over Philadelphia and Chicago melt to three games. But still, there were four new first place teams at the halfway point of 79 summer of serendipity. There were individual surprises for the fans as well as team surprises. Brian Downing of the Angels took over the American League batting lead with a 352 average. No catcher has ever won an American League batting crown and Downing has never batted over 284. Cincinnati's George Foster, known for his home run and RBI swing, also led the National League in average at 333. Foster led the majors in game-winning RBIs with 16, was tied for the National League lead in RBIs with 72, seeking an unprecedented fourth straight title.
San Diego's Dave Winfield also had 72 RBIs at the break and trailed Foster by only two percentage points in hitting. But California's Don Baylor led the American League and majors in RBIs with a whopping total of 85. Could be headed for baseball's largest runs batted in total in three decades. Boston's Fred Lynn led the American League in home runs with 24, which was one more than Don Baylor and Gorman Thomas. The Phillies' Mike Schmidt took over the National League and Major League home run lead from Dave Kingman. Schmidt's nine homers in two weeks gave him an amazing 31 for half a season. In the Department of Stolen Bases, the base paths were greased for Detroit's Ron LaFleur, who motored his way to a major league leading total of 49 thefts. In the pitching department, the Yankees' Tommy John led the American League in wins with a total of 13. While Houston's Joe Negro led the National League also with 13. From the bullpen, Mike Marshall of the Twins topped the American League in saves with 18. And Chicago's Bruce Souter, who recently picked up a win and four saves in one week, raised his National League leading total to 22. These are just some of the stars among the league leaders at the All-Star break. Now, it's time for this week's Volkswagen Quiz. A special Old Timers Day recently celebrated that amazing summer of 69 when the Miracle Mets rose from nowhere to a world championship thanks to a Major League record tying 41 one-run victories. Can you name the team that broke that record? Stay tuned. The Midsummer Night's Dream. The 50th Major League All-Star Game filled Seattle's kingdom, not only with the splendor of baseball royalty, but added many jewels of drama and excitement. Trying to shake the jinx of seven straight losses, the American League took the field hoping to set the early pace. Angel ace Nolan Ryan did just that for the first two batters. Ryan looked too hot to handle. Watch. But Mike Schmidt came into the game with his bat still ablazing. This first inning triple scored one run, set up a 2 0 National League lead. Steve Carlton started for the National League, but in the bottom of the first, Don Baylor brought the American League back. An RBI double, good for one run. And Fred Lynn, playing despite an injury, got two more. There it is. It's going, going, and it is gone. A three to two American League lead after one inning of play. And that's the way it went. Back and forth, the lead changed hands. Trailing four to three in the third, the Americans again came back to score two runs, leading five to four. And for two innings, pitching and defense kept it that way. In the top of the sixth, Gary Carter came up against Mark Clear after Dave Winfield had doubled. Base hit, and the game's tied again at five. That gave Seattle's Bruce Bakke a chance to become a hometown hero, pinch hitting in the bottom of the sixth. With runners at second and third, Bakke broke the ice with a kingdom chop, 
Again, the Americans led six to five. That was a troubled moment for manager Tom Lasorda, now facing runners at the corners with no one out. But Houston relief ace Joe Sambito did the job, slamming the door with an assist from Dave Winfield. The Mets' Lee Mazzilli debuted in the eighth, his team down by one, and he delivered an opposite field home run. Once more, the score was tied, six all. The Americans put pressure on National League pitching arms, but it was the arm in right field that stole the spotlight. Dave Parker loses the ball in the glare of the dome, but recovers quickly. And shoots down Jim Rice, going for three. Man alive, what a throw. Then the play of the game. Greg Nettles lines a two-out single in the bottom of the eighth, with Brian Downing running from second. And Parker uncorks his finest. Downing is out on a spectacular play. Top of the ninth, Bob Lemon makes a pitching change after the bases were loaded by walks. Ron Guidry gets the call. The batter, Lee Mazzilli. Ball four, the Nationals lead seven to six. And that was good enough for Cub relief ace Bruce Souter, who picked up his second straight All-Star win and the National League's eighth in a row. How about that? Now, the answer to this week's Volkswagen quiz. Brought to you by the 79 Rabbit, Dasher, and Scirocco. Volkswagen does it again. Just last season, the San Francisco Giants won 42 one-run games, thus breaking the former Major League record shared by the 69 Mets and the 1940 Cincinnati Reds. Next week, Volkswagen will ask you again. In Texas, all eyes are upon cute numbers and smart outfits. One good-looking outfit right now is the Texas Rangers, looking to round up their first title in the American League West. Just before the All-Star break, the Rangers gunned down defending champ Kansas City three out of four times. Steve Comer raised his pitching numbers to 10 wins and six losses, while Royals' numbers fell to 14 losses in 16 games. Texas bullpen numbers remain awesome. Jim Kern notching save number 16, a Ranger record. He and Sparky Lyle have combined to win or save 40 of 52 Ranger victories. Veteran John Ellis only seems to get stronger in the heat of July, adding seven RBIs the week before the break. And Buddy Bell continues to be the Rangers' game buster with a 433 average during the week with nine RBIs. Yes, these Rangers have proven to be a tough outfit in recent weeks, but at the break they still trail two games behind the hard-swinging California Angels who have really been jamming the stadium in Anaheim. A three-game series against the Yankees opened for the twilight game on national TV nasty hitting conditions when Nolan Ryan is delivering his famed Ryan Express, a hundred mile an hour fastball that leads the majors in strikeouts. Holding many major league strikeout records, Ryan is always a threat to add more. On this evening, he had the crowd going mad, not because of his strikeouts, a modest nine, but he was holding the Yankees to no hits 
going for a record fifth no hitter when Jim Spencer lined this eighth inning shot. Rick Miller can't quite scoop it. Was it a hit? Officially no. An error. A no hitter is still alive according to the official score. Reggie Jackson and the Yankees didn't agree but the controversy became academic with one out in the ninth. No question about that one. And despite breaking up the no hitter and shutout the Yankees were still murdered by the Ryan Express. The six to one win was Nolan's 12th victory of the season. The seventh one hitter of his career more than any active pitcher. As the series continued the roar of the crowd turned from angel hurlers to angel hitters. Rod Carew anxious to play discussed the art with Don Baylor who's kept the hitting temperature red hot in California. Recently activated Goose Gossage tried to protect a healthy Yankee lead but Baylor hit two homers the second a two out homer in the bottom of the ninth to tie a game which the Angel eventually won in the twelfth. And the next day Bobby Gritch batting two out bottom of the ninth Angels trailing by two. It's going going and Reggie it's gone. The Ryan Express, Don Baylor, now Bobby Gritch, who drove home all five runs in a 5-4 win. The Angels may be destined for new heights in 79. Turning to the National League East, the Pittsburgh Pirates have their bats racked and ready to strike for another second-half charge. Willie Stargell and other familiar employees of Pittsburgh Lumber Incorporated have been really cutting loose. New bats like Omar Moreno, a 241 lifetime hitter, but over 300 at the All Star break. Bill Madlock, who recently climbed aboard the pirate ship, has always been a second half hitter. His average is now rising in the 280s. Dave Parker hitting close to 300 with 54 RBIs, an irrepressible force in the second half the past two seasons. If that happens again, watch out for the rollicking bucks. Pittsburgh always adds up its share of runs, but in the past the defense has yielded more than its share. Now Tim Foley has solidified the shortstop position. Better defense makes the Pirates tough customers indeed. late season late inning headaches for Chuck Tanner can be cured by his multi arm bullpen. Grant Jackson five wins ten saves. Enrique Romo four wins two saves. And Kent Ticalbe another second half performer three wins and twelve saves. Thirty six of Pittsburgh's forty six victories aided by this threesome. Only four games out at the break the Pirates may be ready to roll. But then so too may be the Philadelphia Phillies a team trapped back in the standings until recently reasserting their strengths winning seven out of eight before the break moving from seven and a half games to three behind Montreal. <laughs> Suffering particular misfortune during Philadelphia's hot hand former pennant rivals the Los Angeles Dodgers swept away in three straight. Mike Schmidt supplied the power during the energy thrust. Eight homers and ten games.
Catcher Bob Boone added more fuel. Hitting 270 going into July, Boone boosted his average 51 points in two weeks. And helping to ease the pain of injured starters, Tug McGraw brought welcome relief, recording his 12th save. Some thought the fills were sinking fast. Not McGraw. He could lift the spirits of passengers on the Titanic. And the fills are back in the thick of the National League East. Thanks also to Dell Unser, the recipient of this week's Gillette Special. Down by two against San Diego, Unser pinch hit in the ninth, two on, and there goes a three-run homer to win the game six to five. And that was Unser's third home run and three consecutive at bats as a pinch hitter, a major league record. Congratulations, Dell. That's all for now, folks. See you next week on This Week in Baseball. <laughs>